In 1942, the dauntless dive bomber is a newcomer to the Navy, largely untested in battle. Its big moment is coming soon enough. This SBD-2 Dauntless is special. It is the only known surviving aircraft from the Battle of Midway, and it has battle scars to prove it. Each one of these metal patches here covers the nearly 200 bullet holes that were put in this airplane when it attacked Japanese carriers on the morning of June 4, 1942. Rear gunners face backwards, handling 30 caliber machine guns to fend off enemy attacks. In front, pilots control a plane not known for speed, but for precision. Its 1,000 pound bombs aren't just dropped, they're aimed. It's called dive bombing. The tactic of dive bombing was very important in naval aviation during World War II, and the SPD Dauntless dive bomber was the prime instrument of that. And the theory was, with a ship maneuvering on the surface, you really couldn't drop a bomb from a high altitude. From 20,000 feet, a carrier is a speck on the ocean. Hitting it with a free-falling bomb is next to impossible. But in a dive, pilots can adjust their aim on the fly and release their bombs at 1,500 feet for a better shot. It's a tactic that takes icy nerves and an iron stomach. Dive bombing was a death-defying ride of terror. It's basically like a game of chicken that a pilot is playing with the ocean itself. You start at about 20,000 feet, which is about four miles above the ocean. A huge ship is gonna appear about the size of a ladybug on the tip of a shoe, so it's tiny. They practice over land targets plunging into a 70-degree dive. It is a jarring, noisy, chaotic descent. They are diving at 275 miles an hour toward their target, keeping an eye on their bomb scope. They're watching their altimeter. And at the last minute, you grip the bomb release lever on the left side of your cockpit, you jerk it back, you pull back on the stick, and if you're not careful, you can black out because all the blood will be sucked from your head. You get tunnel vision. Compared to Dusty's dive bombing, Tom Eversoll's torpedo bombing practice is low and slow. During torpedo drops, it had to fly very low to the water and very slow, just above stalling speed, and therefore made it an easy target uh, for enemy fighter planes. So torpedo bombers typically go in with fighter cover, even smoke screens, because just one torpedo could sink a ship. 